we are going to work now on this page. Love of Home and Family, Literature Number 7. So you should already have read chapters 1 and 2 by now. And now we're just going to go over for a minute how to write a quote. Do not write these quotes on your paper. Are you listening? Do not write these quotes on your paper. This is just an example for those of us who might have forgotten how to do a quote. Now I talked about this on the last assignment, but here it is again. So if you're quoting from a sentence, the middle of a sentence, if it's not the beginning of the sentence, you put the quote mark, then you put the three dots. We call them dot, 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 but they're actually called ellipses, if you're going to be technically correct. Then you write the quote, a very short shadow for a 10-year-old girl, but this wasn't the end of the sentence either. If you want to look on page one, you'll see this sentence. So we put the ellipses again, and then the quote mark, and then we put a parenthesis, a P period, and the page number that it was actually on, and then another parenthesis. Now, if this had been the beginning of, of the sentence, so let's say the sentence was a very short shadow for a 10-year-old girl, and that was the whole sentence, then it would look like this. No ellipses, capital letters at the beginning of sentences, and that would be it. Do not write this on your paper, I repeat. All right, so then what if we have a quote, someone speaking in our quote? We put the double quote mark. Then we put a single quote. I did it in red here so you could see it standing out from the rest of the sentence. Then we put what the person said. This is on page three. Takes two to make a quarrel, comma, end of talking, single quote. Mom always said. Then, end of the whole quote. And then the page number, parentheses, P period three. So, we have a double quote at the beginning, a double quote at the end. But then to quote the words of the person, we put a single quote inside. So that's just the format for how to do quotes. So let's read the instructions now to this page. Please follow along with me. It says, before you begin this assignment, you will have read both chapter one and chapter two in Blue Willow. Please make sure you've done that. And here's a little introduction. It says, the Dust Bowl of the 1930s caused many people to lose their farms and their homes. They had to find a way to support their families, so they left the Dust Bowl states and became migrant or moving farm workers, like Jamie's father. And we saw this whole idea of migrant workers in the videos you watched about the Dust Bowl last week. As we saw in chapters one and two, they had no long-term home and therefore no stability. When you're stable, it means you stay in one place for a long time and you get to know the area and you get to know the people and you get to know where the stores are and where your school is. Without stability, no stability means moving all the time. The title of chapter two, as long as we can is what it was called, describes the uncertain life they lived. They never knew how long they would stay in one place. This uncertainty is difficult because we all have a natural love of home and family. We also need the feeling of belonging that comes with having a home. Now, Janie and her father and mother had a house with a little one-room shack. This was it like the way they described it was much, not much better than a chicken coop, although it didn't stink like a chicken coop, but it wasn't a home that they felt like they belonged in. So the last line of the first paragraph here says, without this root for our lives, the root of having a home that we can go home to every night that we know is our home, without having this root for our lives, 
we become lonely and sad. So here's your instructions. Identify the quotes that show the principle of love of home and family. Some pages talk about not having a home or family. Read and reason from pages 2, 4, 6, 9, 10, 24, and 27 to find those quotes. Then identify quotes that talk about loneliness and belonging from pages 17, 18, 21, and 29. So I'm going to go over with you how to find some quotes, and then you're going to be on your own to find them. Now normally, if we're in the classroom together, you can say to me, Miss Margaret, is this it? Is this it? But we're not together, so you're going to have to think and see what you can find. So on page two, let's start reading right here where it says Janie. One, two, three, four, five, six lines down where it says Janie. I'm going to read a section, and inside this section, not the whole thing, but in this section is your quote you're looking for. So let's see if you can find it. Beginning at Janie. Janie wondered, see where I am? Janie wondered without much interest what their neighbors were like. Dad hadn't said whether there were any children or not. Of course there would be, though. Every family had children. Every family except the Larkins, that is. Sometimes, as now, Janie regretted her lack of brothers and sisters. Big families always seemed to have a better time of it than she did. As you see, there's a one little sentence in there that kind of gives you the, the feeling of the whole idea. The whole idea is Janie wishes she had brothers and sisters so she would have a big family like everybody else. Well, she has a family. She has her mom and dad, but she wishes they were a family with kids. So your quote could just be right there. Sometimes, as now, Janie regretted her lack of brothers and sisters. So that's a whole sentence. You start with a capital letter, write the whole sentence out to the end, put quotes at the beginning, put quotes at the end, parentheses, P, period, page number, and close parentheses. Page two it is on. All right, pause the video if you want to write that. Let's go on to page four. On page four, I'm going to start reading right here. Ready, set, go. I saw you when you got here this morning, said Lupe. I would have come over right away, but my mother said to wait. How long are you going to stay? Janie was used to this question. She had answered it many times in the last five years, and always she gave the same answer as she gave now. As long as we can, said Janie. So in there, what do you find that shows Janie sort of sad over not staying in one place and not having a home, a permanent home? So I would say, and we're going to write this one out together, I'm going to show you how sometimes you can take the middle out of a quote. You can have some words, dot, 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 and then some more words to the end and take out the part that's important but not the big deal important part. So starting where, again where I read, I saw you when you got here this morning, said Rupe. I would have come right over, but my mother said to wait. How long are you going to stay? There's the question. So let's start our quote with that. So we're going to do a double quote, and then a single quote, and then Lupe's going to say, how long, and you can write this along with me if you want, how long are you going to stay? Question mark. And then the little quote, the single quote, because it's going around the words that Lupe is saying. Janie was used to this question. She had answered it many times in the last five years. So Janie and her father and mother have been traveling a lot around and not, not having a permanent home for five years. That's half her life because she's only 10. 
He barely remembers not living like this. How much can you remember when you were four or three? Probably not very much. So I think that's important that this has been five years. So let's put, the, the short version is you could just put this and then you could put Janie's answer as long as we can. But I think the fact that it's been five years is very important to this story. So let's continue. Janie was used to this question. Answered it, answered it many times in the past five years. So now to make this quote short, a little shorter, it's kind of long. We could take out at all, she always gave the same answer as she gave now, as she now gave to Lupe. We can leave that part out. So we're just going to put three dots and this T. And then we're going to put what she said. Single quote, as long as we can. Comma, single quote said Jamie. So that would be your whole quote. So we shortened it up a little bit. But it has all the ingredients we need. Basically, it's how long you're going to stay as long as we can. But the fact that they've been doing this for five years is significant. It hasn't just been the last five months. It's been half of her life. So that would be your quote. So you, if you did your quote for page two, then you can write and page, then you could write this one. This is your next one. And let's put page number parentheses P period four. There you go. Pause the video if you didn't have time to write all that. I'm going to pause mine for a second, too. Bye. I'll be right back. Don't go away. All right, I'm back. We're on page six now. I'm going to read a section to you, and I want you to see if you can find the quote. We're going to start right here in the middle of the page. Where did you come from? She asked when Betty was safe again. Do you mean in the beginning or just lately? Asked Jamie. It made a big difference as to the length of the answer, for the whole story of the wanderings of the Larkin family since they left northern Texas to come to California would have taken longer than Lupe might have cared to listen. So in the middle there is the concept of them wandering about. See if you can isolate the quote, it's just a couple lines long, and write it down. Pause the video if you'd like to, otherwise we'll go on and you can come back and write these things later. On page 9 and on over to 10, one quote grows from 9 over to 10. This one's a very, very important one, so I want to do this one with you. Let me erase the board and I'll come right back. Okay, let's go ahead. We're on page 9. We're going to start right in, the, in this area right here in this paragraph, about halfway down. Actually, we'll start at the beginning. There would be plenty of time to show Lupe the plate, Janie decided thankfully. She needed a lot of time to show anyone the plate. Indeed, she never hurried in showing it to herself, for it was no ordinary plate. It meant to her what a doll might have meant if she had one, or brothers and sisters. How important are brothers and sisters? Mm, pretty important. And it meant much more besides. To begin with, it had belonged to Janie's great-grandmother, so it was very old. 
Then it had belonged to Janie's mother, but that was a long, long time ago, before that mother had died and mom had come to take her place. The memory of her mother Oh, the memory of her mother was so shadowy to Janie. So let's stop right there. We're going to pick bits and pieces out. We're trying to explain how this plate represents love of home and family, because it really does for Janie. If you go on to the next page, it says, the willow plate had become, had once been a part of all this life before, the life with her mom who had died and the home that they had had. Um, so backing up actually, mixed up with this faint memory, laughter and a home of their own are in there. Because the willow plate had once been a part of all this, it had seemed actually to become, uh, where am I, to become these things Jane. All right, so let's write this quote. We're going to kind of stick some parts of the quote together to make one big piece. So let's start off with the plate. So it says right here, the plate. So we're going to, we're in the middle of a sentence. So the plate. And then we're going to skip a little bit. So we're going to put some more ellipses. The plate meant to her, right down here, meant to her what? A doll might have meant. So we can understand um, a special toy. And then we don't have to say if she had had one, because we know that. But had meant, or, this is more important, or brothers and sisters. So it meant more to her than brothers and sisters, even. Continuing, we're going to skip a little bit. We're going to put our ellipses again. You could be able to put it had belonged. We could say the part about her great mother, grandmother, but the most important part, the most important part is that it had belonged to her mother. It had belonged to Janie's mother. Whoops. And then we want to put, we're going to string it together again, Jenny's mother before she had died. Before that mother had died. So you can be writing along with me if you'd like. So we're talking about a love of family. So this plate represents a memory of her mother and therefore represents family to her. So you can see how we've taken out the most important bits and put them together. So we're going to put page nine right there. So pause the video. If you need to, I'm going to move my, my phone, my camera over and we'll start with the rest of this quote. So here's another quote that's related to that one um, over on the next page. So we're going to go over to page 10, starting near the top. It says, mixed up with this faint memory were Mother Goose rhymes and gay laughter and a home of their own. 
So we're going to kind of trim out the mother goose and things like that. But let's put that mixed up with this faint memory, meaning the memory of her mother. So mixed. Sorry, I'm printing. Mixed up. Mixed up with this faint memory. Now here's another thing you can do when you're doing a quote. If you want to tell your reader what faint memory, but it isn't actually in the quote, because it already said the memory of her mother back a few sentences, you can put a square bracket and you can put of her mother. And then a square bracket. So mixed up with this faint memory, of her mother were dot 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 laughter and a home of their own. So there's the love of home. So there's the love of home. Mixed up with this faint memory of her mother was laughter, were laughter and a home of their own. So you can barely, barely, barely remember when they had their own home before the Dust Bowl made them lose the farm and have to go on the move to look for work. Writing that down. Then we're going to go on the willow plate because we know the willow we know the willow plate is important to the story, or they wouldn't have named the book Blue Willow with a picture of the plate on the front. The willow plate. Had seemed actually to become these things to Jane. The end of our quote. So this is page 10. So pause the video and write that down. Now I'm going to leave you to find the quotes on pages 24 and 27. The one on 27 is actually a fear of not having home not having a home at all. See if you can find that. Caused a big fear in Janie. And then you're going to go on and look for quotes about belonging. So we're going to start on page 17. There's a quote right about in here. It talks about the joy of finding a friend. And on page 18, there is something that talks about loneliness and having a friend. Page 21, again, Janie's thinking about belonging. See if you can find that on page 21. And then on page 29, there's that as long as we can phrase again, but there's something else that you need to find in there right in the middle of the page on page 29. What does Janie wish she could say when people ask her, how long are you gonna stay? Or when she asks her dad, 
Daddy, how long can we stay? What does she wish she could say? Those are your quotes for belonging. Now, once you've collected all these quotes on the next page, and if you run out of room, get a piece of lined paper and continue on there. Then on this page, you're going to write two to three sentences or more describing Jamie's love of home and family or fear of not having it. And then a separate one or two lines, sentences about her struggle with loneliness and belonging. They're kind of connected to each other. And you're going to see this is a theme that runs throughout the book of wanting a home but feeling like you don't fit. Wanting to stay somewhere but feeling like you're going to have to move at any time. Wanting to belong but feeling like you're on the outside. So call me if you have any questions or you get stuck. But try really hard before you call. You're smart. You can do it. Bye.